Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of, I guess for now, we're going to call this the Wellness Wisdom Show with Tam and Grandpa Bill. With Grandpa Bill and Tam, who cares about that? But we would love your suggestions if you have many for a change in the name. We're open for that. Have a little fun. So it's still the VA Sales Kennel Club Holistic Healing Hour until they catch up with me. <laughs> we're here daily, each and every day. My two church mice, Peter and Paul, we do a couple of audio shows each and every day. One entitled Workouts for Geriatrics, a.k.a. Silver Streakers, good for all kids from 1 to 92 because it's about health and wellness. Main Cross Promotions, which is exactly what we're going to talk about in a moment. And pretty much main for me now, mostly in life, but we still talk about business when I used to be long ago, far away with Jacob Molly, how we used to do it then, and how young entrepreneurs like Vent Tam here is going to tell us about in a moment. And if you see this show, whatever you see first, the holiday season. I did do a prelude show earlier today. You may see that later, or this before. But I want to jump right in because we have Tim for about 30 minutes, and she is one busy lady today. So, Tim, welcome aboard. Welcome back. And if you want to segue right in, kind of sort of where we left off the last time, that's what I tried to intimate in that prelude show today where we kind of left off. So, welcome aboard. Take it away. Tell us, about the, tell us about the Energy Almanac. And by the way, Amazon best-selling. In two categories. Yeah, this... and so tell us about those awards as well. Take it away. Take it I away. would love to. Thank you so much for having me back. Absolutely. It's really exciting to be able to do a show with you every single month. Um, and yeah, we got to come up with a cool name. And I have to admit, I haven't had. You know I what? Had a... You know what? You're more in tune and creative in that. But honestly. I, I haven't had the opportunity to really take it around the block and kick the tires. But it's up in the gray matter somewhere. We'll kick it to the front. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds good. So I am the author of The Energy Almanac, and um, I'm super excited to talk about this book. Uh, it's an award-winning book. And um, again, I'm just super proud of it. This book is seven years old in that it's an almanac. It's written every single year. And this is book number seven that Bill is holding up and that I'm holding up. So first of all, let's talk about the awards it's won. Last year, the book won the, the bronze award by cover. The Coalition of Visionary Resources voted mine a, a bronze award winner in the category of, of um, calendars and almanacs. Real quickly, that's a big deal in that genre. Even I know that. That's a big it deal in that genre. Deal. Continue, continue. I'm super, super excited about it. I'm very proud of that. This year it won gold. <laughs> so awesome. again, Coalition of Visionary Resources um, voted this book a gold. That's that's really exciting. Most people won't actually know what the Coalition of Visionary Resources are, but they do know what Amazon is, Bill. Yeah, they do. So I'm very excited to say that it Energy Almanac became a bestseller in two categories earlier this year. So that means that it hit top 100 in two different categories. That's and true. what's exciting that's about that's that. That's true from the pudding of all the hard work, initiative, passion that you've put into it, obviously. But congratulations. And Thank continue. you so and continue. much. It's, it, it's exciting, especially, and I don't, I haven't said this much publicly. I don't even don't know if you know this, Bill, but there are 12 million books that are sold on Amazon. This book is a top 100,000. That, that's, book. I mean, that speaks for itself. I didn't know the exact number, but I know they sell a bunch of books. I read a lot of books on Amazon, Kindle wise, and so forth. So they definitely sell a lot of books. That's awesome. That's yep. a big number. That's significant. It's a big deal. It's a big number. And I think it was, I think it hit like 88,500 or awesome. something like congratulations, that. Congratulations. Congratulations. So, Infinity. Thank congratulations. You. It, it's right now it's hovering around book number 230,000, something like that, but it still is in the top, um, top of a couple of different categories. So what, I mean, what is the energy almanac? Why do people care? Why should they care? Well, here's the thing, Bill, you know, this, I get that, you know, this already, but astrology is affecting you, whether you understand astrology or not, whether you believe in astrology or not, the Greek word for soul is psyche. Astrology is is energetic imprint implants 
imprints affecting your psyche. Let me try that again. Astrology is energetic imprints affecting your psyche Correct. at a soul level. So Uranus is doing X, Y, Z. Well, you're feeling X, Y, Z in your body, but you don't necessarily understand why. So in astrology, there's um, a kind of predictive astrology that I have been able to track and decode. It's called mundane astrology, and it's the, it's the ex explanation of what the planets are doing more or less globally. I use the book to explain what might be going on in the economy, as well as what might be going on in your home budget. I'm able to tell you when road rage is happening globally, <laughs> but when, when rage might be inside of you personally. Right. So right. it's global and it's personal, mundane, meaning every day affecting everybody, right? Um, so every year I sit down and I take a big block of time mm -hmm. in January and February and I write 52 weekly astrology predictions. I want to share a little bit about the inside of the book, Bill. Please, please. All right. So it it starts with, real, real quickly, make, yeah. make sure that you definitely reference Janet, your show, and her contribution, and that you guys were already, you know, thinking about the 26th version that you're about to allude upon. Absolutely. Yeah. I will do that. Um, so uh, the book has a, an astrology primer in it. So if you don't know what the planets do, here it is. If you don't know what the zodiac signs mean, here it is. I've given you a basic astrology primer and the houses. What does it mean to be in a house? What area of life is the second house, the eighth house, the sixth house? We tell you all of that. And then at the front of the book is all of the high level information about what's going to happen throughout the year. So there's little articles that you can dig into to sort of get a, a basic understanding of what might happen. What, when are the retrogrades? When will Jupiter move? When will Pluto? What will it mean when Pluto goes into Aquarius? Outside of that, you have your uh, year at a glance calendar, so you can do all of your planning. And then where the rubber meets the road is in these pages here. Every month you get an overview page with a beautiful piece of art and these weekly blocks of time. Each week, we keep it super simple. This is my wheelhouse, is simplifying information. Do this, but do not do that week after week after week. So the first week of January, do choose your battles wisely this week. Do not cling to outdated fear patterns. Now, if you can understand that, Bill, then you're basically understanding astrology. That, that question, those do and do not are built off the astrology. You have a theme of the month right here. You have a coaching question, or you could use it in your journal for writing. Here you have the two moons of the month. And what do those moons mean? Because not every moon is the same, right? Inside of the, the monthly book, you have a chance to do your planning in a calendar. You have a monthly overview. This is um, the feel of the month ahead written in a paragraph style with key transits. It's kind of like this is more what an astrologer would speak like in this page right here. Here we have space for if you're a person who loves to pull oracle cards, you can do that. But the meat and potatoes of the book are these weekly predictions. Every week we, we break down the week Monday to Sunday. We tell you what the moons will be for the week, and then an article telling you which areas of life are going to be active. We mention the planets. I might even mention the transit, like conjunct or square or things like that. Um, but we keep it simple so that everybody, whether or not they read and understand astrology, can read and understand this and apply it because what's the point of knowing astrology if you cannot apply it? it it's so true it's so true because as i alluded to in all my shows at best and i might be giving myself a lot of credit i would be a novice in the astrology but it's so user friendly and easy it, to follow along it really really is it really is thank you i'm glad it is very easy to understand and follow along and that was the goal when i decided to make this book um 
beautifully right here are the gift and the shadow of the week. So every week based on human design, there is an opportunity for people. And there's also a subconscious below the surface level shadow energy at play, meaning what might I bump up against right. psychologically? It could be fear of the future. It might be self-sabotage. It can be any number of shadows, but those beautiful segments are written by my cohort, Janet Hickox. Janet is a master astrologer. She's been doing human design for mm, maybe 10 years, a long time. And she works very diligently to track where the planets are inside of the human uh, design protocols. And she uses that to come up with the gift and the shadow every single week. Now, Janet also is my mentor. So my astrology understanding comes from her teachings. I will tell anybody who's listening, who's thinking they want an astrology reading to absolutely contact Janet at livingastrology.com, living-astrology.com. Um, she's my partner. Literally, we are joining forces in 2026 fully. She'll take part ownership of this book. Awesome. And we are going to uh, partner to create the 2026 Energy Almanac starting next week, Bill. Awesome. I know you. <laughs> and real, real, real quickly, make sure you mention, so I don't screw it up, the official name of your show with Janet. And if you want, real quickly, for those that probably might not have been at the show, if you were, definitely let us know that. Especially the point of, I think everybody in their belly, the election's behind us in the next period of time in January. And you guys did a great point of where that precipice in time, right around when official swear-ins and all that kind of stuff. Can you maybe touch base on that? Because I think... That's probably something that's festering in maybe everybody's belly a little bit. Absolutely. We should absolutely talk about that. I'm going to pull out my uh, 2024 book. This is the book I'm working in right now. This this stripe here only means that it's on mine and that I can find it on my desk. Um, <laughs> uh, so every month, on typically the last Wednesday of every month, Janet and I do a podcast called Astro Inklings. And it's an astrological, energetic view of the month ahead. Um, Janet can go extremely deep on topics. She, I try to bring her back to like, let's keep it super simple so people can understand. And we do a one hour show where you can sort of hear from our mouths what is coming up for the month ahead. So let's take a peek at, first of all, huh, and this is the page for December 2024, right. realigning your faith. And so that is the overlying theme for 20 for December 2024. And so what we're looking at are some key transits that are going to occur mostly during the first week of December, Bill. You probably caught that during the podcast. Correct. Um it's going to, like, one of the things that I would like to highlight about December is there are three moons. In December 2024, we have three moons. It starts on December 1st on the East Coast with the new moon in Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius is that optimistic, hopeful, expansive thinker. Sagittarius is about your faith. And your sort of rampant desire to speak your truth. Correct. Remember, truth is subjective always. And it's based on the filter that you grew up with. Yep. So your truth may not necessarily be my truth. Right. But when it's a Sagittarian, you're going to hear the truth. They love to tell the truth. They have very high ideals and a very big vision. So this December 1 new moon is the perfect opportunity for all of your audience members to sit down and create a vision for yourself. We're in a period of time on this planet where there's a lot of unrest. I think that's the best way to say it. There's a lot of unrest and a lot of uncertainty. The best thing any human being can do is put their, their best intentions forward. Even if your candidate didn't win, 
if you will pour your intention into, I'm going to make the best of this. Correct. I am going to approach this in a neutral manner. That way I'm not being overly aggressive. Um, I am going to mind my manners as I do this process. Those are really good intentions. Isn't, isn't that the special sauce recipe right there to make it work? I don't know. To allow I don't it to know. allow it to work. Continue. Continue. Absolutely. Continue. Absolutely. Continue. Everything is unfolding perfectly. And that's really what you have to remember. And that's the Sag rising in me. My my rising sign is Sagittarian. I'm I'm very much wear rose colored glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. I and I love the pun. I love it. I love it. Yeah, love that's it. that's my little pun for you today. Um so we're gonna start off the month of December with setting intentions to believe because Sagittarians about what do you believe? Correct. And having faith that everything is unfolding as it should. My next big adventure is in front of me and I'm ready for it. Okay, so there's that. The second piece that you have to remember, and this is, it gets a little bit clunky right here, is that the planet Mercury, which is our communication, Correct. Um, and our thinking and analyzing brain, Mercury is in Sagittarius retrograde. So it's the time to really pull back and do some reflection about what do I believe? what might be in my way of my faith? Where am I not believing hard enough? Um, what is my next adventure? What might it look like? It's, for, it's time for you to reflect on old information, review it, and then make new uh, patterns, thoughts, structures based on assimilating that information. So Mercury is retrograde in Sagittarius until December 15th. December will feel clunky communication wise because of this. And that is something to be aware of. Even Grandpa Bill here, you might have issues um, with technology. That's a very common Mercury retrograde thing. So um, be mindful that communication be, can be clunky. And it's, if you're expressing your beliefs, it might be tough. It could feel, I can't get it out. I don't know what, how to say right. it. What, what did I mean? That could be the feeling. It's okay ride the wave <laughs> and and trust that it will trust there's that sad word again trust trust that it will be okay okay i've got more is that okay no absolutely continue please continue All right. continue um mid-month mid-month we have a lot going on i'm saying mid-month the seventh the eighth up to the 15th let's go into the second moon that i talked about the second moon is a full moon in gemini gemini is the opposite sign of sagittarius so once again, truth <laughs> is at the front, okay? So there's going to be like a tug of war between Gemini and Sagittarius. Right. And this tug of war is all about the truth and information coming in that might rattle your cage. There's the planet Uranus, which is the cosmic cage rattler, is present in this moon. And so information will be coming in. It could be fast and furious. Or what did I say on the podcast? Like a fire hose. You did. You did. Yep. And um, so you might have to like step back, take a breath, take the information in, but don't be reactive. Take the information in and sort of let it simmer, right? Exactly. Let it simmer. Uh, the full moon is always about letting go real and releasing and sort of a realignment. Remember you set a goal December 1st to, to be hopeful and to dream into your next adventure. Well, what, what is in the way of that now? You have to look at this. You're halfway through your 30 day cycle and Gemini is like, what could I learn? Um, what could I take on? What have I not learned enough about? What have I not asked questions about that might be in the way of me reaching that goal? Correct. So the, the, that full moon is always a chance to say, what am I missing so that I can attain that goal? And then you go there, you go in that direction. Absolutely. And, uh, and as you and Janet also said, at this time, this is the balance, the balance in life, the balance in everything. But isn't this a great time, especially right now, to kind of slow it all down a little bit, take it all absolutely. in for the transformation? 
Pause the show. Absolutely. Quick. Yeah. And, and you're going to feel it anyway, because the next thing that I was going to talk about, and you're touching on it right now, is the fact that the planet Mars which is the planet of action is going to retrograde. Correct. So it's going to appear to be going backwards in the sky. But what, what it really is, is a slowing down of the energy of Mars. Absolutely. Mars wants you to move, but there's going to be a natural pull to slow down and not take action. And instead what you can be doing, since it's in the sign of Leo right now, what you can be doing is be asking yourself questions. Every time there's a retrograde, your job is to ask questions. What can I do differently around my creativity? Leo loves creativity, creative expression. Um, how can I change my uh, expression in a way that will benefit the planet? So there'll be a natural slowing down of action taking and a natural desire to sort of pull back. The Mercury retrograde, the Mars retrograde are going to do that for us. And good. Because the information is coming at you fast and hard, really better to for everybody to just like go get a cup of tea and just sit with it. Exactly, and sit I'm, I'm going to take a little sip with you. Yeah. So while we're doing that, and what an advantage to have the full moon right from the get go on December first, and then as you get to the thirty first, having two more moons in the interim. New Year's Eve, I mean, it sounds corny, but what a preset to, to make all your wishes and New Year's resolutions, but it's such a real great time to do it's, so. It's absolutely perfect. You're talking about the third moon in December. Yep. It's not often that we get three moons a month, but in December, we're having a second new moon. Correct. And Bill's, Bill is referring to the new moon in Capricorn on December 30th. And this one is exciting for anybody who really prefers the business of life. Sure. Capricorn is um, the zodiac sign of the three-piece business suit. So imagine yourself pulling on that vest and tie <laughs> and, your, and your suit, and now you mean business. You're going to set goals. You're going to create a plan. You're going to add form and structure to your life and discipline. This is serious business this moon, and you're going to set a goal for the for the next 30 days to involve structure. So for me, I'm an entrepreneur. I run three businesses and um, it's important that I know my goals, that I've mapped them out and that I can see it on paper, having it written down, having a map. I love to create a business map year after year and put it on there and now I can work with it. So that final moon december 30th is a perfect opportunity for you to do some planning that might be a perfect time because it was one of the things i would love to have you shift into and you just did it perfectly from an entrepreneurial which you obviously have to have that passion and feeling for and you got three businesses entrepreneurially what's this looking like going into the impending new year with the way, you know, the election being over and all of that. What's it looking like, especially as a woman entrepreneur, because I want to accentuate women in business for so long have not got a fair churn. You guys are getting there. So what do you feel as though your challenges personally are? And what are your hopes, entrepreneurial, if I'm making any sense, in this sure. astrological change that we're going through? Well, thank you for asking that question. I'm proud to be a woman entrepreneur. I was raised by entrepreneurs. Like this is all I know and it's all I really want to do. It's really my astrological print to be an entrepreneur. Um, I feel hopeful about the future for women. Good. I absolutely do. Good. I think more and more people have a awakened to the fact that too. there's been some inequity. I, do I get that. I, I am, I'm not a feminist at all. Like I don't consider myself in that vein. However, I do, I can look and know that we have been underpaid and under-recognized and under honored sure. and all of that. Sure. And that's, that's where my heart is, Correct. you know? Um, that being said, we have some really interesting aspects coming up in 2025 that are going to play toward leadership. 
we have some significant aspects happening in the realm of leadership next year. They're going to happen uh, mid-year, probably May. Okay. I, th I think I think May is correct. Um, and that is going to bring more compassion to leaders. It's also going to bring um, more energy to our leaders. And women who are on the rise are going to feel this innately. They're going to feel it inside of them. I think it's a very exciting to be time to be alive as a woman entrepreneur. Um, a tool for a woman entrepreneur. Here's like here's a fact, Bill. 70% of all people love astrology. 70%. The thing is, not most people aren't talking about it publicly. Correct. They're not willing. They're like, oh, it's woo woo. I, I was know, just going to say, like, isn't it? I was just going to say, isn't that the whole the, I, I can't talk about it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be seen as woo woo. Yeah, well, right, I feel free right. to be woo woo right. because look, it's JP Morgan who said millionaires don't follow astrology, billionaires do. Astrology has been used for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years to direct and guide your life. And if you will tap into it, you are riding the wave of the energy that is in play. You may as well. Um, that's what the book is about, is about riding the energetic wave with grace and ease. Okay. Now there's more, I can't give it all away today. We still have tons about, of shows to do. Don't give it all away. I'm teasing. Yeah, I'm teasing. We, we I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Um, but Bill, there's a couple, I know that we're kind of wrapping up our 30 minutes already. It goes by so quick, Doesn't it? but, um, I have to tell you, like, I've got three really, really big opportunities in December that your audience might be interested please, in. Please, Tim, um, I have the time as long as you do, obviously. So okay. we don't have to worry about the 30 minutes as long as you got it. So please enunciate on those because it's important. It's important. Okay. Wonderful. So. All right. Maybe we haven't talked a lot about the fact that I am a transformational coach. I started my journey, my entrepreneurial journey in earnest as a transformational coach, helping people understand what's going on emotionally and that those emotions are affecting your physicality, whether or not you are vibrantly healthy or whether you are sort of broken or right. having a disease. Right. So. I've decided to go back to my roots and I'm, I'm fulfilling a request from the many people who want to learn emotional freedom I technique love tapping. That. I love that. So I am going to give my signature version of what emotional freedom technique can look like for people who want to get well from the inside out because healing is an inside journey, not an external Absolutely. journey. Even though I have an aching shoulder. Correct. I know that it's because I am emotionally burdened. And until I get to the root of that emotional burden, that shoulder will stay uncomfortable. That is one example of how your body is responding to your emotional output. Correct. Emotional freedom technique, and I'm going to do it for you Please right do. now. Please do. This process <laughs> yeah. of EFT tapping is absolutely life changing. Oh, so, what I'm going to do is walk people through this process of tapping on very specific points on the upper body and the face. I'm going to teach them how to speak to their body Correct. and down here to the collarbones. And I'm going to give them my pr private po protocol that I typically use with clients. The results that I've received are amazing. And it's something that anybody can do right. for the rest of their life is tapping. So on December 10th, that is a Tuesday from 7 to 9 p.m., I'm going to teach emotional freedom technique to the masses. Group call. I'll do it through a Zoom link. And it's $50 to participate. You will get the training video to keep afterward. It's going to come with a 30-page PDF booklet that oh, I wrote wow. long ago. Wow. Um, and you get it forever. And then you can use it again and again and again. And that's that's option number one for all of your audience, okay? Correct. Second thing I want people to know about, if you like my astrology style, if you think I can... Okay, Tim.
Can Let I us know. You? Okay, you're still there. Good. No problem. I'm still here. Continue, yep. continue. 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 I think I can speak in a way that that you can understand. Every year, I do an annual overview of what to expect in the astrology ahead. So I'm going to express all of the roller coaster ride of 2025 in a 90 minute um, annual overview call that I do. Um, both of these classes, that one's going to take place December 19th. Both of these classes are available for sale on my website, which is called choosebigchange.com. Yep. If you type in just three letters, EFT, that will bring you to the EFT class. Cool. And if you type in annual overview, that will bring you to the overview class. Wow. If you want the energy almanac, just type in almanac and you're going to go right there so and you cool. can get the beautifully coil bound book for yourself. I've only got about 30 of these left, Bill. After that, it's only Amazon. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and really... As someone with humble bumble hands and all that, who cares about that? But the spiral bound lies so flat and it's so it's great. Beautiful. And it's when unique. you're not gifted artistically like somebody, it, no, but really it's very user friendly. But listen, the hard bound book, the contents within whichever way it goes is well worth it. But if right. you can grab 30 of them of these left as you speak. 30, 30 of the coil bound left. A, a little tiny bit more lying flat that I certainly find, you know, a little bit yeah. easier to, to work. Because the book is meant to be written in. You're you're meant to journal your thoughts. There's some coaching questions right. in there. You're meant to, it's meant to be provocative and, and to force you to write. You, so you'll, you you'll get, get a energy. kick out of this when you get the time to see what I did do in talking about in the prelude shows. Again, I can't draw a lick. But in, I believe it was not today's show that you uh, just completed with Janet, but last month, you talked about the stop sign and the go. Well, you have a really good one. In the book, in the book, I do have a green and a go. And every uh, day since I got the book, I've challenged my own listening audience to do their gratitude daily journals. But. Also make a complaint, gripe, or we'll have them. We'll have them. Yes. Yes. But I haven't heard back from anybody yet. Maybe their quirks out superseded their gifts because that was the cha that was the challenge. So anyway, so far, in all honesty, I'm a go so far. Because my gratitude has superseded my quirks. That's and never awesome. and never forget one of my shows is called Grandpa Bill's grunts and groans. I have a few quirks. <laughs> so, <laughs> so did you want to wrap it up with a final thought? Or, well, do, or continue? Offering, yeah, continue. I have one more offering I want to let everybody Please know about. I don't, I'm not rushing you, but I know oh, you're busy. You're fine. But I know you're, you're fine. busy. So every year, I've done this for, I've done this, I think, since 2015, maybe. Yep. Um, I do what's called an annual In Your Jammies review. I reflect, remember, I remember renew, that. retreat. So what I do is I invite people to retreat with me, and I am going to guide people through a three-step process of looking back at 2024, feeling into it, and and leaning into the pain, and then we do emotional freedom technique to clear it, and then we do journaling. To, this year we're going to do art, and then in the last segment of the retreat, we actually do goal setting and we do my specific method for goal setting. And the retreat itself is very powerful in that there's a lot of bonding. People make new friends. Um, it's a deep dive into how did I really do and how do I really feel about it? I also do a smidge of astrology peppered throughout the whole retreat. This year, it's January 3rd, 4th and fifth and what that looks like is online friday the um third with two hours of work on saturday the fourth if you're in the brunswick maine area you'll join me at the healing spa one of my businesses and live in that space in your pajamas go 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 i love it, I love <laughs> it. we are going to do the bulk of the tapping and the emotional work and then on Sunday, online, we'll do two hours of goal setting. I love it. So love it. it's a very robust program. 
we have so much fun we go really deep there are a lot of tears and a lot of laughter a lot of reflection and sharing of information and it's very powerful if you're an entrepreneur if, especially if you're a solopreneur like I am Correct. and you need to connect with others, it's a beautiful place to make connections. It can get lonely out there having been a sole proprietor. I'm retired for 30 years. It can get, lo it can get lonely it can out lonely. there, even though you have good friends and all of that. It's not an aspersion, but it definitely can get lonely out there. Real quick, because we got to let Tim go. Again, I can't draw a lick. There's my green. There's my red. There's my Bye. calendar. There's my calendar so far in my weeks that I'm doing good I so far. It. On my gripe That's list, on my gripe list, hasn't superseded my gratitude list. So I give myself a go. I'm. I'm That's I'm good. awesome. <laughs> I last, love it. Last thought before the next time. Any last thoughts before we? Um, no, my last thoughts is just is really don't be afraid of the astrology. Um, for those of you who like, well, oh, you know. They call themselves a Bible thumper or I'm religious. Look, 428 times inside the Bible, God directs us Absolutely. very clearly to use the, the stars, Absolutely. to use the planets. God tells us very clearly to be your own astro yep. logger. Astro logger. There's meaning in words. Don't be afraid of astrology. It's there for you to apply inside of your life. I am Tam and Tam I am, and I'm so happy to be with you. I love that Bill. too. I love that pun too, of course, Dr. Zeus. I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. And Rumi, you and I are definitely going to talk about Rumi in the prelude show when you get to listen to it. That was one of the, and I love the book. I love the book. I love the book. But I loved it so much that I had a Rumi poem right in the cover that's close to my Rumi heart. Rumi is my favorite. I, I love, love, love Rumi. So He yeah. was so light years, obviously, centuries ahead of himself, a show for another time. A show Happy for another Thanksgiving time. to everybody that's listening and enjoying Thank it. You. And hopefully where you're getting, Grandma's house or whatever, be safe, be happy, and enjoy family time. It's so important. Sam, you enjoy it with yours and yours. Yep. I hope you all yep. have a very enjoyable one. I'll see you the next time around. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. I'll see you all tomorrow. Same time, same station. Peace. Have a good evening. Peace, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Bye-bye.